Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys a review for Boruto episode 147. And before I get into this week's episode, I have to address last week as far as not doing a review. I had a lot of you guys message me asking, was I okay? So to put it short, last week I didn't do the 146 uh, episode review because I was hungover. Like, I'm just, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. I was hungover and more hungover than usual. I've done some of these reviews where I've had a hangover, but last week it was bad enough i woke up i responded to a tweet i cut on vrv and the moment that like the bright lights and everything start coming on for the opening my eyes started hurting i cut the television off and i went right back to sleep so with that being said i apologize for missing the episode review so with that being said let's get into this week's episode review so i gotta say so i kind of get what the writers were doing here and there's a few things i thought was a a, a moment of, of maybe accident brilliance okay so the first thing is like in the last episode it ended off with Sukio meeting Boruto and Team 7 and Kokiri and they're fighting under the full moon I think that that's accidental brilliance because Sukio's name is partly a play off of the moon so I thought that that was interesting that you got Boruto and them fighting under a full moon against a guy who's part of his name is a play off of the pun of having a moon and then in the outro you got the whole thing about how the sun rises I mean I thought that that was interesting you know because they're supposed to be fighting until sunrise gets there when the supply ship comes in and it's also a bit of accidental brilliance because it is a new day the Sun does rise on this arc and you see Shoujoji at the very end of it and I got a big bone to pick with Shoujoji's character in a second but what I will say is that I thought it was interesting I really thought it was interesting that we had this moment where right when the fight starts off we see Sarda and me and Boruto they're whipping out all their various jutsu and they're fighting against their uh, shadow cells basically where basically you have this moment where Shoujoji he has this moon jutsu which is an imitation of the Nara clan shadow possession jutsu and I know a lot of people cause I've seen some of the comments a lot of people saying I thought the Nara clan jutsu was a uh, Keke Genkai it's not a Keke Genkai it's not a bloodline trait the Nara clan is made famous for being able to manipulate the shadows but it's a hidden jutsu that means it's passed down from clan member to clan member so in theory anyone could learn this jutsu or a variation of it to put this in perspective the third hokage was stated to either know exactly how every hidden jutsu worked in the uh, hidden leaf village or he knew how to perform them that's why the third hokage in his prime was stated to be the strongest hokage out of the previous four hokages i mean it's something to kind of keep your uh, mind on for that now the other thing i found fascinating when it came to uh uh, Shoujoji when he's pretending to be Sukio is that you're seeing exactly what I told you guys about in the corpse clone jutsu I told you guys that once he uses this jutsu he's able to take on the memories the appearance and he's able to take on the actual ninjutsu of the person he's controlling so you see it to the point where Shoujoji is fighting as Sukio and he's doing it very believable to a point where you know you don't actually suspect it's Shoujoji until the end of the arc so the other thing I found funny about Sukio's ability that that moon crescent jutsu is that the actual shadows it really really remind me of the uh, mirror reflection jutsu for those of you who don't know what that is okay basically that's the jutsu that you actually saw in the kazakage rescue arc so that's when you had rock lee and mike guy and neji and Tin Tin. they're fighting doppelganger versions of themselves this was kind of a variation of that but i like how you get this moment where as boruto's fighting even though saw was talking about the fact that they were losing chakra Boruto flat out stated that he was losing chakra faster than he should and the reason why that's so huge is that that's foreshadowing and the reason why that's foreshadowing is that Boruto's karma seal a lot of you guys have been asking hey when are we going to see the effects of it you're seeing the effects of it now because what the karma seal does early on is it messes with Boruto's ability to use jutsu and you see it here Boruto when he complains about that he's not able to fully mold his chakra as he's fighting like if you look at it Sarda and Mitsuki they bum rush they use their jutsu a lot faster and after Boruto uses a simple Rasengan that's one of the first things that he complains about so I thought that that was a nice bit of foreshadowing because that's going to have a huge impact going forward
so i gotta say like when it came to the fight part i thought that that was cool i know a lot of people are saying like hey you know the actual fight took longer than it should but i thought that they did a nice job of giving us a few minutes of action roughly about five minutes of fighting against those shadows and then you introduce the new plot element by having the searchlights come on so now you make the situation even harder and you put sukio in a position where in order to uh, not blow his cover because that's really shojoji inside of him he ain't trying to go to jail so in order to not blow his cover you have shojoji briefly having to uh take out the searchlights that way team seven is able to focus on their shadows but as that happens you find out that those shadows they can't actually run through the light so i thought that that was pretty interesting because shojoji is out of necessity and everything is basically setting up where you get this moment where as they're fighting as they're fighting you have kokiri and kokiri is in that moment where he realizes what's going on he realizes that they're uh, running away from the shadows but he isn't able to offer much assistance he isn't able to help out for much anything i like how those shadows are starting to use some of the jutsu and they're starting to overwhelm boruto and team seven i thought that was cool i also thought it was cool how they started getting pushed back i like how kokri has that moment where he realizes that he's been a burden and i know that's something a lot of people uh complain about in episode 146 i like how he basically redeemed himself here because he saved Boruto at the last minute and what I like about this is how even still Joji looks at it and says like damn never would have expected you to be someone to do something like that and I like how you get that moment where as that happens as that happens all of a sudden Sarda is able to create the diversion and it gives them time for the guards to attempt to come in and capture Shojoji so I thought that was cool because again it, it, it buys time it shows you that Sarda is very aware of her scenery so I thought that that was really really nice now the other thing though that I will say is that I like the little bit of coordination that you got where you had uh, Boruto running and Miski is aiming those lightning snakes right in between Boruto onto the sides of them and then you get this moment where Boruto's combining the shadow clones and Shojoji is briefly at the moment it looks like he's going to be caught off guard but all this is basically a huge ass diversion so I thought that that was really cool because you get this moment where as Shojoji has Boruto pinned down that's when you see Sarda. Sarda is right behind this guy and you see Kokiri and Kokiri finishes his redemption he finishes his redemption because he gets over there by that searchlight and he goes from being a burden to actually coming through clutch at the very last moment so I thought that that was interesting I thought that that was really interesting for a character who basically has been nothing short of useless this entire arc to come through clutch I like how he gave that uh booklet with the members of the Magina bandits and information on them because you got to remember in the manga Konoha didn't have any information on them because the, the Mujina bandits were an upstart they were in the process of gaining notoriety they done enough to where they gotten on the feudal lord of the land of fires radar that's part of the reason why he was meeting with Naruto in Konoha so I like how this prison arc was as they promoted it a prelude to the actual Mujina bandits arc because you got to remember the actual Mujina bandits arc in the manga is four chapters five if you count the post chapter with the car organization at the very end of it literally if they really did the manga version did an episode per chapter you would have had two episodes of slice of life one episode setting up a fight and then one episode with the fight so i like the angle that they're kind of going here so i thought that that was cool i thought that you know boruto even though he realizes that you know chakra wise he's running lower on chakra he doesn't realize this because of his karma but you see miski and sarda and they're in that moment where they're able to system and one thing i found interesting though one thing i found very interesting about that is you know i told you guys like hey you know miski miski knows wind release and the other thing is is that sarda also knows wind release and what you see in this moment is that Sarda, she was actually assisting them with that because Miski's using the wind release. Sarda puts her chakra with it. But in the 
this part in the timeline in the Sasuke Shinden novel in that time where she actually unlocks her three Tomoe Sharingan one thing that we find out is that Sarada has brief mastery of wind release it isn't as proficient as Boruto and Mitsuki, but she does have some pretty nice wind release skills so I thought that that was interesting we got a glimpse of that maybe that's a bit of foreshadowing and they might be adapting the Sasuke Shinden novel but what I found interesting here is that after Sukio goes flying over the ledge you think it's over until all of a sudden Kokiri is grabbed and the one thing and this is where my big nitpick is gonna come I told you guys I did two videos on Shojoji as far as his jutsu and as far as how powerful he is in particular when it comes to the corpse clone jutsu I told you the Boruto anime was going to change this and you guys know for the most part I am a stickler I believe in sticking to the source material unless you're doing something that adds to it and if it adds to it it better not change the heart of the source material for me I didn't like this line right here or this scene right here where you see Shojoji and they imply that in order to use the corpse cone jutsu he's got to eat the brains but I know it's being implied because I know how the jutsu actually works because I read the manga in the anime you see Shojoji he's dragging Kokiri down and Sukio is in the process of dying so obviously Shojoji dies inside of Sukio's body that's it it's game over his mouth opens up and then it, it, it just fades the fuck away i cannot stand that i knew they were going to change that i knew it some people are like oh we saw urashige eat his renegon yes but i mean eating his own eye and in those few moments like that that's nowhere near as graphic as seeing someone bite into the skull of somebody and literally start sucking out their brain and chewing on it like that's the one thing that pissed me off but i said you know at the end of the day because of the time slot that it's running in it's not running in prime time like Naruto and Naruto Shippuden it's not running in prime time during the weekday at night I believe Naruto Shippuden ran and Naruto ran at seven or eight o'clock during prime time I had a feeling this shit was gonna happen and sure enough that's exactly what happened to us I say all that to say at the end of the day I do love the fact that Sai got that information they went through the interrogation and Shojoji has that moment where he has to explain some of the corpse clone juice so he doesn't give all the uh, details on how the jutsu works as he's pretending to be Kokiri but I like how at the very end as Kokiri's going back you're thinking damn this dude's about to be snuffed out and then sure enough it actually turns out that it's Shoujoji and you get this moment where he transforms back into his own body so I mean overall this wasn't a terrible episode I wouldn't call it a great episode I just call this one a good one I thought that when it came to the fight scenes they did just enough in order to keep it from getting stale because they did a good job of every time the fight felt like it was starting to drag on they introduced new wrinkles whether it be the searchlights whether it be the guards whether it be having to say kokiri and come up with the diversion i thought that they broke this fight up into three little small arcs i thought that at least from that element it was it was good i would have liked to have seen more one-on-one -on -one with uh sukio and with uh boruto but at the same time i understand it because of how jutsu works that's like asking shikamaru to go hand to hand with somebody he's going to rely on his shadow possession jutsu more so than anything else so overall like i said i thought that was cool but my episode question to you guys is gonna be what are your thoughts about number one shoujoji's jutsu and the fact that they cut it out and if you've not seen my corpse jutsu explain video i'll leave that in the info cards in the upper right hand corner of this video but i wonder what your thoughts were about them changing as far as the appearance with the corpse clone jutsu by cutting out as much as they did and i want to know how many of you guys predicted that sukio was going to be actually shojoji i'm in that camp where i thought it was actually mujo who was the person that shojoji had taken over but i will say this I, i'm not not disappointed that it was actually uh sukio and i'm not disappointed that shojoji had taken over uh kokiri's body i'm not disappointed by that at all but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below but as always guys if you like anything i had to say don't forget to comment rate subscribe and share thank you so much for watching on to the end have an awesome day guys